Thanks for joining us. Another Beyond the Faith, an unusual podcast. Um, Blue Ray J, also known as Jay Drizzy, Jay Drews, and a host of other titles. And uh, this is my man, the co host with the most, T, also known as the Black Sun Shaman. I'm your Blu ray, Blue Temple Prophet, coming to you today. Thanks for joining us, yo. This is uh, whew, exciting times, exciting times in more ways than one, right? Woo, indeed, indeed. I'm ready for this uh, new world order, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We're coming upon that uh, black hole sun event, as some call it, the uh, solar eclipse coming on the 8th. You know, yeah. uh, we got some major, major news today, some earthquakes on the East Coast. Heard about some earthquakes, I want to say, yesterday on the West Coast. So, yeah, they had a, a real high level earthquake in an, uh, in one of them countries. It was either India, China, somewhere around in there. They had like a seven point something earthquake right before the one that was mentioned today. Yikes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Man, interesting times. Interesting times. For sure. Um, got some, some heavy subject matter for you today. We're going to do our best to tackle it. Uh, in an informative, enlightening, enlightening, and entertaining way. Uh, uh, I'm going to take a look into uh, CERN. Uh, the High One Collider. Yes, the world's largest hadron collider. World's largest hadron collider. Um, yeah, man. Um, also going to look into some news, uh, just in case you know you missed it. Um, not you, T, but uh, the audience, you know, 19 galaxies discovered that are devoid or missing dark matter. Uh, 49 new galaxies discovered with the use of a radio uh, technology telescope. Um, some interesting stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That take light workers to a whole new level. The, the nineteen galaxies with with no dark matter. Did yeah. the light workers come from over there? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, hey, we might be finding out real, real soon, man. Right, right, right. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so yeah, listen. Mm. Yeah, nineteen galaxies devoid of dark matter, and why? Why is CERN firing up the collider during the coming black hole sun event, aka solar eclipse of two thousand and twenty-four, um, or as some might call it, year eight? <laughs> if you got it, you caught it. If you missed it, hey, backtrack. <laughs> Join a chat group or something. Uh, Go on and find out. Yeah, man. Uh, wow, where to start? Where do we start with this? You know, um, whoo, we could jump into one of the articles. Uh, if you what you think, T, yeah, uh, yeah, that, I, that just me adding on quickly that, that I noticed right then that's two they call CERN a portal speculative theory, and they also are calling this Black Sun event. A portal, which is a you know interesting commonality between those two, <laughs> those two. Right. Yeah, right, right on. Um, mm. so let's take a look here. Let's jump into the speculation here. Uh, so let's let's get it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Uh, this is let me present for us and the audience. So allegedly, and according to the source. Um, yes, indeed. NASA geared up for test runs during the eclipse. 
Let's take it. Let me pull this up larger. Okay. Wow. Yep. So not the view I'm trying to gather for. Uh, there it is. Okay. So what happens when NASA launches a rocket during a solar full solar eclipse and CERN activates its particle accelerator simultaneously? We'll find out on April 8th <laughs> during the once in a generation celestial phenomenon. Several scientific investigations will be focused on the solar eclipse, aiming to harness a better understanding of what happens during these events. There's another commonality. Mm. They're, they're NASA's studying the particles in the air, and CERN is studying the particles colliding and how they affect each other. So there's another commonality between this event and what's going on. Yeah, very, very interesting here. Very interesting here. Um, so I got I had a call coming in. Let's see. A total solar eclipse is where the moon moves between the sun and earth, of course, by completely blocking the sun's surface and casting a shadow on earth. Millions of people across Mexico, the United States, and Canada will be located in the path of totality, where the moon's shadow will completely cover the sun to witness this occurrence. As part of the experiments it will be undertaking, NASA has scheduled three sounding rocket launches. And uh, WB-57 high altitude planes will also take off to examine the unique conditions between the sun and the earth that will occur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That the uh... That makes me think about sun coding. And if there is actually sun coding, because people said they receive downloads and uploads from the sun and have like an interpersonal relationship with the sun in that way, I wonder if they're trying to, uh, or, or if that has some correspondence to what they're trying to discover, what the sun may be communicating, you know, and they're looking at this as a perfect time to do so. <clears throat> sure, sure. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, NASA scientists will observe and gather the information during the solar eclipse to help scientists better understand and study how Earth's upper atmosphere is affected when sunlight momentarily dims over a portion of the planet. And additionally, the space agency says it will investigate the ionosphere disturbances that occur when the moon passes in front of the sun during an eclipse. Sounding rockets will lift off from NASA's Wallops flight facility in Virginia. Hmm, so they're not launching from Florida this time and are scheduled to launch at different times. Hmm. So launches are scheduled for 40, uh, 45 minutes before the event, as well as during and after the peak local eclipse. The, the ionospheric region of Earth's atmosphere between 55 to 310 miles, 90 to 500 uh, kilometers above the ground, located between Earth's lower atmosphere and space. It is composed of ionized particles charged by the sun's energy, and it can be very challenging to predict changes that can occur due to space weather conditions. Space weather conditions. Also interesting. And CERN is going to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator. For the first time in two years, CERN, the CERN Large Hadron Collider, LHC, particle accelerator will be revving up to smash protons together, which also coincides with this year's total eclipse. These experiments will aim to find evidence of invisible particles that may offer insights into the hidden secrets of our universe, particularly dark matter. Hmm. So they just flat out say that they're trying to discover the use of uh, the solar with the ionosphere and the lower to discover what information it may provide. And then the portal, the whole portal thing, didn't they just bring the God particle back before they went on their little hiatus to study it? They just got the... From what I understand, yeah, they, they had already... Um, 
not only gathered evidence of it, but that they had somehow discovered that some may be trapped within the, the Hadron Collider itself. Uh, and two explosions took place during the last launch or uh, startup of the CERN uh, Hadron Collider, and they were able to peer into two wormholes uh, to discover uh, these galaxies that we're getting ready to talk about that were spiral spiral like galaxies that they could see uh for some huh with some de degree of determination that there was no dark matter in those galaxies there was regular matter but no dark matter yeah. Uh, um. That, again, that reminds me of the whole concept of light workers. And then we're talking about talking about portals. That, those are definitely portals. There's no way you can see into those dimensions in a hydron collider and be looking at the sky. So that that you know that would have to be occurring within the hydron collider. You know what I mean? And that that definitely sounds like a portal to me. And what's interesting from studying. Um, Studying occult sciences, I learned that you know you can use fluid condensers to to make a, a small portal. Like they use fluid condensers over black mirrors and stuff when they're trying to reach out to to contact different you know spheres of consciousness. So if they want to talk to the Mars sphere, then they'll use um, water and this oil and this metal to make uh, something over the top of the mirror so they can communicate with Mars. You know what I mean? Uh, it's interesting that the Hydron Collider has a fluid, and I'm, I, I'm not sure what the fluid is. It's helium something they gave the name to, and it's a superconductor. And then they gave another set of words to it that it is also a super something. It's a superconductor and a super something. But the gist of it is that it is very highly capable of transferring large amounts of energy and making them useful or, you know, transferring them and, and sustaining them for a long enough time for them to be something. You know, if it's too high of a frequency and it can't be sustained if it burns out right when it gets here, that's just how they do them rockets at NASA. They got that whole sprinkler system down at the bottom. So when the rockets are shooting out, they can keep the fire from burning and scorching everything below and messing everything up. When that much energy is being shot down, I think that's what the fluid condenser, whatever it is, the fluid that they use at the hydron collider, because it's in like a fluid. The whole machine where the where the the where they hit together, where the particles hit together, is water. It's all some type of fluid condenser. So if they holding that energy and they reaching this high level of energy that doesn't have as much dark matter as we do, then they may be sustaining a connection to it because it's able to operate at that high of a vibration without immediately being burnt up. Hmm. Wow. Well, let's see. Um, a lot of this is revolving around, of course, the sun and the composition of the sun, according to scientists' uh, estimation, is 92% hydrogen. There are some theories, you know, around that, that uh, stating that, that it's possible the hi uh, hydrogen is compressed because of the mass of the sun and converted into helium. So uh, there are other um, statements that that is not at all what is happening. So it's just, this is very interesting. Go ahead. Uh, you you so. So would the hydron collider then be mimicking that type of particle compression? Good question. I'm not absolutely certain, but there is a high high possibility because you know this is a particle accelerator. So in the process of uh, accelerating the speed or rate of uh, particles and causing them to have a collision with other particles we have mm -hmm. you know opposing particles and we also have you know uh particles that would saying share the same uh composition so yeah uh, that's a very good question um i don't know the exact answer 
uh, it will be great. If someone wants to comment, you know, like, share, that, subscribe. Uh, yeah, that would be an, that would be another uh, connection to the sun. Because if you're trying to mimic that, you know, I mean, if that's being mimicked and you're seeing into these different galaxies and having this different perception with that colliding, if this opportunity is coming up where the sun is at that little darkened space, then they're probably hoping that they can see better at it. You know what I mean? Understand? How, I, I can see now what they may be doing. You know what I mean? I can see. I can see now really clearly what they may be doing. They're trying to transfer and utilize that energy and see how it works. And then there's also another concept that we were talking about in the last one with melanin. If melanin is able to take in these large levels of energy as well, then there would probably be a study of the people too going on simultaneously with this eclipse because that has the potential to activate superhuman capabilities with that much power being transmitted into the transmitted by the melanin to something useful to the DNA and RNA. It wouldn't be activating in that consistently. It would just be during this time frame when those um when that type of clarity or non-clarity is happening. You know what I mean? Who knows what starlight might be able to, or, or, or you know, starlight might be able to be seen when that's, you know, happening. Cause they got that comet coming through and they said Venus should be visible too. And those mm -hmm. wouldn't be visible in the regular sky. You know what I mean? So they might be trying to, to, st to study how those lights affect the ionosphere, the atmosphere, and people is in relation to the energy that's being transmuted at that time. Theoretically, it would have uh, the same effect on people as it would the environment, being that people are made out of the same material as their environment, theoretically Indeed. speaking. Uh, but, you know, like... <sighs> I'm, I'm going to read from this article a bit. Um, let, let's just give the people here just a, a view. If you missed it, this, this article is from uh, December 12, 2019, last updated on May 18, 2023. Um, astronomers have discovered, discovered 19 more galaxies missing their dark matter. Instead of dark matter, these strange galaxies are mainly filled with regular matter like the protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up everything we're familiar with, just as, you know, we were just discussing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the new find published November 26th in Nature Astronomy. This article, though, by the way, is from uh, astronomy.com. Um, bolsters that the, uh, this, okay, let me back up. The new find published November 26th in Nature Astronomy bolsters that controversial recent discovery of two other galaxies without dark matter. The mysterious substance accounts for most matter in the universe, and it's thought to be the primary component of all galaxies, as well as the main driver of galaxy information, uh, formation in the first place. So finding so many galaxies without the exotic matter suggests astronomers are missing something major and how uh, uh, and about how galaxies form and evolve. Uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And then how did and then they're not? How did they see that from the hydron collider, Jay? Is nobody's going to ask that question? That's a very pertinent question. How do you have a machine that spans from wherever to wherever inside of the Earth? And you're able to see 19 other galaxies that a telescope cannot see unless you open the portal. All right. So I'm going to drop something in, in your uh, in our messenger chat. And I'm going to allow you to read this and go in on it. I think you have a um, better vantage I, point. I can't, I can't pull it up right now because it, it might oh. make my mic go out of the room. It'll make it. it that's what it's going to do. Yeah. Right, 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 the device. All right, so I guess y'all have you all will have to bear with me reading again. <laughs> <laughs> they loving it right now because this is this right here. <laughs> so I asked AI, "How are new galaxies discovered?" I also looked up some articles on it, but I'm going to try to give you a brief overview for the instance of time and attention. Um, so. New galaxies are discovered through various observational techniques and methods. 
Uh, here are some of the common approaches. Visual observations. Historically, astronomers discovered galaxies by visual scanning the night sky through telescopes, of course, right? And they would look for faint, fuzzy patches of light that did not appear to be stars or other known celestial objects. Uh, photographic plates. Before the digital era, astronomers used photographic plates to capture images of the night sky by comparing images taken at different times, right? They could identify objects that had moved or changed in appearance, potentially indicating the presence of previously unknown galaxies. So their imagination. Now telescopes, <laughs> modern telescopes, both ground-based and space-based, equipped with advanced Im imaging capabilities are <laughs> essential tools for discovering new galaxies. Now these telescopes, uh, telescopes can detect faint and distant objects that would be difficult or impossible to see with the naked eye. Also, they use surveys, large-scale surveys of the sky, such as the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, or SDSS, and the Hubble Space Text Telescope, which we're all familiar with, deep field observations. Systematically, can, uh, scan large areas of the sky and uh, identify and catalog galaxies. And these surveys use advanced imaging techniques and computer algorithms to identify and analyze galaxies in vast amounts of data. Mm. Now here's one of the most important, radio astronomy. Galaxies emit radio waves, which can be detected by radio telescopes. Radio surveys, such as the Very Large Array, or VLA, and the uh, Atacama large millimeter and submillimeter array, or ALMA, A-L-M-A, can detect galaxies that are obscured by dust or gas, and they may not be visible in optical wavelengths. That's, that's, that's heavy right there. They may not be visible in optical wavelengths. Infrared astronomy is another. Oh, oh. Care to care to go say something at the moment? Yes, yes. I I, I just <laughs> okay. I, if they're the infrared astronomy, if they're using lenses to mm -hmm. look at different stars to see different things, then they're using a different. They're looking through a different vibration. Mm. So if you amplify that vibration in a water, a pool, a pool. If you amplify that vibration, then can you see through that pool that vibration? Then if you're able to, to equilibrate that vibration, find that vibration, sync with that vibration, know what that vibration is, and you apply it to the pool, hmm. then what occurs? Speculative theory. You know what I mean? Then what occurs? It would be great, so, be great to have a scientist just you know, at hand, just, just to have them elaborate and expound upon, you know, what they actually know, what would be considered speculative and uh, pre give a prediction as to where the next advancement in understanding would come from. Yeah. You know, um, but, you know, you, you do have a very good grasp of, uh, not just, Go ahead. Go ahead. I would just say the next advancement from CERN, if that's what they're working on, would be to equilibrate a body to make that transition without burning up. Hmm. Or even a, a suit, mm -hmm. an attachment, some type of uh, yeah accessory. But mm -hmm. you know, um, another way that they do this is through grav gravitational lensing, which I, I have never heard of, uh, but makes sense. Uh, but the bending of light by massive it's objects known as, known as gravitational lensing, it can distort and magnify the images of background galaxies. By studying these gravitational lensing effects, astronomers can discover and study galaxies that would otherwise be too faint to detect. And uh, lastly, let's see, citizen science projects such as Galaxy Zoo, 
engage volunteers in the process of classifying and identifying galaxies in large data sets. These projects leverage the power of crowdsourcing to analyze vast amounts of data and identify potential new discoveries. Overall, the discovery of new galaxies often involves a combination of observational techniques, advanced technology, and data analysis methods. When you say data, data analysis methods, you said 19 galaxies were found with no, with little to no dark matter content. Well, the, the, the guy who's in prison now for what, it, for the underage activity he was involved in, the information, uh, Malachi Z. York, the information that he has available, interestingly enough, has a reference to 19 galaxies. And he gives an explanation for these 19 galaxies within that. So if they were, I'm saying that because if they were canvassing information and then looking for discoveries based on the information that they were canvassing, then these two match that description and what they found match each other. You know what I mean? Which is interesting. <clears throat> what we're going to have to do at some point is uh, delve back into, you know, the information that you and I have come across uh, years ago, refresh ourselves and reacquaint ourselves with the discovery. Well, the knowledge of the Dogon tribe yeah. uh, uh, and uh, potentially even the Hopi who mm -hmm. seem to be a sister tribe here on this side of the water in the Americas, uh, what they knew, know or have known about these galaxies and how the visibility uh, and familiarity with those galaxies will become more and more uh, available to us from this particular vantage point. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> I would, I would, I would say, uh, someone like uh, Dr. Malachi Z. York um, would have most, most likely discovered and be been familiar with the things that the Dogon have kept record of, you know, since their presence here began on on Earth. So, yeah, um, that makes that makes sense that that you know he was able to expound upon it though. Um, you know, that's that's another conversation and we can have that at, a, at another time, another episode. Um, but yeah, uh, wow. Um, so using these methodologies, apparently. Um, let's, let me pull this up. Sorry. Sorry about that. We'll just go ahead and share. It. Like, share, subscribe. And uh, if it is a portal, hop through that mug. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, if you if you are capable, mm -hmm. some are, some aren't. But hey, that's maybe enough next life cycle for you. Uh, not you, but for you know the, someone out there. But over over the ensuing decades, astronomers realized that every galaxy seemed to be chock full of dark matter, right? So now, how are they measuring this dark matter when they're not really pr particularly certain what dark matter is? Apparently, this is not being fully disclosed in uh, in a, a, a genuine manner, right? Yeah, yet, yet, yet they've been studying melanin, which is very carbon in color, mm. very dark in color. They've been studying that for for some time now. Some time now. Not to mention that there are esoteric texts and um, ancient scientific references to to the same, which would probably have been the clue that they might want to find that out as quickly as possible. Uh, and it's a journey, of course, in all discovery or rediscovery or research. Um, but you know, <sighs> so in their in their pursuits, is this why they are you? I mean, speculative theory again. Is this why they're using the helium in the in the in the fluid that they're using? It's the second most most um, most plentiful element in the universe, 
So are they running test runs to see which one of these is the element that's able to contain all of the energy in the universe? Slight, if, slight correction and observation. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen is the most plentiful, but oh, helium I, comes from the compression of the hydrogen, and it is a con the, the result of the conversion through compression. Okay, so you got helium, which is, I mean, not helium, you have hydrogen, which is the most plentiful, mm -hmm. and then you have helium, which is the second most plentiful. Well, so, oh, so, so that takes us back to the condensing of it. If there, if that's the result of the condensing of it, then they assume automatically that it's the one that can sustain that type of energy because it results. So yes, that's what, why they're using that element to make the fluid condenser that is there when the particles collide. Which is also how they were able to surmise that the, let me, let me make sure I use the correct reference. The, uh, let me go back before I lose it. The, gra the gravitational lensing, bending of light by massive objects. Slowing it down so it could be visible instead of moving in its quantum compatibility. Making it have to move out of its its directed path around the mass of an object. Oh, like the eclipse. <laughs> <clears throat> So we got a question. Mm -hmm. Peace to Ra, Ra Communications. <laughs> um, yeah, how can you measure space dust and or dark matter? That's a great question. Great question. So. Man, when you said Ra, when when first greetings and welcome to the room, when you said Ra, that think made me think of the fact that the one of the the missiles that they're shooting off at the eclipse is called Nemesis. And Nemesis was an enemy to Ra, which was the sun. And that's an interesting note in the in the relation to everything that we're talking to, that they decided to name one of those rockets that they're shooting at the sun, Nemesis. Yes. Yes. Uh, I would say to uh, Raw Communication, stand by. Um, we will research, see if we can pull that answer up for you, you know, while we're live. If not, we will definitely address it in a new uh, future episode. But uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm sorry, I missed it. What did he ask? She asked. Uh, oh, she asked. How can you I'm measure man. space Thank dust? You. How can you measure space dust and or dark matter? Right. So I, the only way that I can think of offhand is that's is the move is movement. So they're shooting those those uh, rockets up because they want to watch how the dust from the rocket or whatever particulars they have in the air. They want to watch if it move to the left, move to the right, if it's going in a spiral, if you know what I mean, they want to see the way that is transferring from the the sun down or the eclipse down or whatever. So uh, I would say to Rock Communications, what I was just sharing with you on dark matter and the ways that it is detected, that would be your answer. Those methodologies of gravitational lensing, galactic rotation curves, which is, let me explain that, observations of the rotation of galaxies have been, have revealed that stars and gas and galaxies move at speeds inconsistent with the amount of visible matter present. So the, the void around the visible matter uh, would be uh, what they're looking for. Uh, the, but those methods that I shared with you um, provide the insight into the nature and properties of dark matter. So it's a combination of things that they're using to measure um, 
space dust and or dark matter to answer your question. Uh, and, and I know that's probably not like a scientific exact um, no. summation, no. but it, that's it, about it, how they talk. <laughs> well, um, true, true, but, but yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see here. I want to share this uh, also with the audience. So, so they're calling it invisible, mysterious substance. And but yet it's the most dominant aspect of any galaxy. So finding a galaxy without it is unexpected. It challenges the standard ideas of how we think galaxies work. Um, ooh, this this opens up a can of worms for us, right? But it shows the dark matter is real, and it, it has its own separate existence apart from other components of galaxies. Just a few months later. Uh, Van Dockham and his team. Uh, let, let me go back a bit, just a tad, just a tad. And if you're with us, thanks for rocking with us. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your attention span. And whatever supplements you own or food you eat, share that with everyone you know so that they can mm -hmm. have the same attention span. But <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back. Let's see. So we thought that every galaxy had dark matter and that dark matter is how a galaxy begins. Van Dockham said in his press release after the discovery, this invisible mysterious substance, there they go with that again, right? Uh, is the most dominant aspect of a, any galaxy. Now, <coughs> just a few months later, Van Dockham and his team uncovered a second galaxy without any uh, appreciable dark matter. And they called it NGC 1052-DF4. And like NGC 1052-DF2, this ultra diffuse galaxy raised a lot of eyebrows in the astronomical community. One critic was astronomer Ignacio Trujillo of the Institute de Astrofisica in Canarias of Spain. Something that caught my attention very early on was the fact that Galaxy DF-2 was not only anomalous for not having dark matter, but also having an extra extraordinarily bright population of globular clusters, Trujillo told Astronomy. I remember thinking two anomalies at the same time looks really looks odd. Could the world be changing around us? Could reality be shifting? Could the conspiracy theorists, spiritualists, and uh, conscious so-called, quote, air quote, community be right? Could we, instead of looking at an extinction level event, be looking at an evolution level event Hmm. You know, in the sea, when you go down so far, the life changes. And as you reach higher up into the light, the life changes. And you can't make you can't make a descent too fast or an ascent too fast or it won't be your body won't make it. It's not acclimated to that level of existence. It's interesting that they say that this shift in consciousness is due to our planetary body raising up. And as it raises, more energy is made available to it, uh, just like something coming up in water. And if you go to the higher extent, different life forms are available. So it doesn't necessarily change your existence. You change in accordance with this so you can acclimate to the new shifts and things that go on, that go on. And there may even be new life forms available, which brings me to this because we, we didn't cover it. We have. Um, coverage areas that are being set up and strengthened at this time. So if you have different um, energies that are available coming in during this eclipse or during uh, a time when they're using these uh, particle things, they want to maintain a vibration <laughs> that that something in those portal portals could live in or be sustained in for an observed in for a time. They um, they may be able to accomplish that 
with these coverage areas. And then uh, something I didn't even think of, we said that it also is true for bodies. You know, that that, that energy is you transferable know, within why, the body. You know why I'm chuckling is um not laughing at you, but I'm laughing at you because you just can't leave that five <laughs> dimensional, five generational magnetic energetic field alone you just always got to go over. are you trying to say that that draws more dark matter is yes that, is that possibly an explanation for that missing dark matter that they can't detect because it's changed form yes and then and and it, it you know that that is a and then they're spraying stop telling on them <laughs> then they're also they're also spraying stuff that's the same, uh, has the same energy transference capabilities and maintenance capabilities for energy within the sky at the same time as they're providing these vibrational coverage areas. Five so, you know, coverage areas. Listen at your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, no, I mean, the excellent observations. And I mean, in the land of speculation, I mean, it's just as good a theory as any. And mm -hmm. I mean, someone would have to go through great lengths of explanation to show why that may or may not even be plausible. But, mm -hmm. oh, you know, yeah. just a specula speculative theory. That's all. <clears throat> well, hey, there's some people uh, major in degrees of speculation. <laughs> and they lead large organizations that uh, people of dark, so, people of the so dark, dark matter or God particle follow. But we'll hey, we don't we'll stick it on the topic at hand. Uh, topics at hand. Um, so so um, here's another. This is NASA. Let me let me share a little bit of what NASA says before we move to the next or segue to the next. Um, not topic, but, you know, co connected, uh, yeah, connected subject matter. But, yes, uh, NASA weighed in on this, so. Mm. Mysterious mysteries of galaxy missing dark matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then I got to say light workers and dark workers again. There's all these people who say they're light workers. They're, oh, we're here from a different planet. We came with a message to deliver humanity from darkness. See, now you done opened up another can of worms in my mind. <laughs> Are there some who came to restore the understanding of the purpose and functionality of dark matter and others who have come to steal the dark matter from up under our noses. This and many other questions will be answered on the next episode of. <laughs> uh, so, when, <laughs> when astronomers using NASA's Hubble telescope, space telescope, telescope, I can't even. Let me back it up. I can read y'all. When astronomers using NASA's Hubble tele, Hubble Space Telescope, I did it again. <laughs> When astronomers using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope uncovered an oddball galaxy that looks like it doesn't have much dark matter, some thought the finding was hard to believe, and it looked for a similar, simpler explanation. Dark matter, after all, is the invisible glue that makes up the bulk of the universe contents. All galaxies are dominated by it. In fact, galaxies are thought to to form inside immense halos, check this wording out, of dark matter. So finding a galaxy lacking the invisible stuff is an extraordinary claim that challenges conventional wisdom. It would have the potential to upset theories of galaxy formation and evolution. There's that word. Mm -hmm. Are we looking mm -hmm. at a new evolution? I say yes. But hey, who am I? I'm Jay Drizzy, damn it. All right, so oh, oh wait, and then they do say that the level of a of a of a, a galaxy or our level of a of, of, of a planet is based on their ability to transmute energy. I'm gonna have to find that included on one of our episodes. There's levels they say to a universe. You could be a 
class one, class two, class three, class four universe. And it's all, all of these classes of universe are dependent upon your ability and capability to utilize the energy that's available within the construction of your universe. What you just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I hear you, my brother. It all depends on your ability to use energy. That's all. You, that, 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 the summation of it. What, yeah, yeah. I got something else here that might blow some people's minds and enlighten some others and explain certain things that other people have been experiencing in their meditations, etc. Uh, let's see. So, a team of international astronomers have discovered 49 new gas-rich galaxies using the Meerkat, don't you love those names, radio telescope in South Africa from observations that were not even three hours long and were made possible by uh, IDIA, Inter-University Institute of Data Intensive Astronomy. I see what you did there. I see what you did there, Jay. I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> we. Mm. All right. So uh, that's the the evidence to support that if you're reading through radio frequency, another galaxy, and then you change the radio frequencies to and first you change it from digital to four. Or you do the 440 switch over. Then after you do the 440 switch over, after you discovered the 440 frequency, that's disharmonic to any other frequency available to us. Then you amplify that through radio signals and make that the base signal for everything. And then you go to extend the capability to receive information. And then you make that vibration a coverage area and give people a bunch of devices that are running with that baseline frequency. Yep. What you just said. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. So, so uh, Dr. Marcine Glowacki. Uh, from the Curtin University node of the Inter International Center for Radio Astronomy Research, also known as CRAR or IC ICRAR in Western Australia, led the research, which aimed to study the star forming gas in a single radio galaxy. Although the team didn't find any star forming gas in the galaxy they were studying, Dr. Glowacki, I hope I'm saying his name right, instead of discovered, instead of that, discovered other galaxies while inspecting the data. Uh, in total, the gas of 49 galaxies was detected. Dr. Glowacki said this was a great example of how fantastic an instrument like Meerkat is for finding the star forming gas in galaxies. I did not expect to find almost 50 new galaxies in such a short time, he said. By implementing different techniques for finding galaxies which are used for other Meerkat surveys, we were able to detect all of these galaxies and reveal their gas content. The new galaxies have been informally nicknamed the 49ers, a reference to 1849 California gold rush miners. Jay. So, yeah. We, I'm not even going to. Nope. Nope. That's an interesting name that they chose there. Wait, let's see when the article was um, posted. Oh, oh, March 25th, 2024. Mm. So in total, the gas of 49 galaxies was detected. Dr. Glowacki said this was a great example of fantastic instrument like Meerkat uh, for finding star forming gas in galaxies. So now they're also able to detect galaxy, galaxies by their gases. They're not detecting any new gases. They're just detecting new galaxies by the gases that they already have an understanding of, or at least knowledge of the existence of that they're able to, uh, what's the word, qualitatively uh, discern uh, the presence. So um, 
So I'm wondering if they're using color, uh, frequency, color, and or or frequency, yeah, color signature and light, of course, or something to that effect. Um, but of course, let's see. He goes into something interesting here. These three are particularly interesting as by studying the galaxies at other wavelengths of light. Uh, we discovered the central galaxy is forming many stars. It is likely stealing the gas from its companion galaxies to fuel its star formation, which may lead the other two to become inactive. Hmm. Interesting. NASA caught an image, Jay, of a ship. They got. I, I'm sure you can still catch it on YouTube or or something. Where will you by typing in the search engine, um, ship stealing energy from the sun. It was interesting to see that this ship didn't travel through. It just popped up a little bit away from the sun, went into the sun. You saw it latch onto the sun in some type of way or another. It stayed there for an amount of time and then left and went back into like some type of something that looked like it could travel through you know what i mean as opposed to traveling through space itself right which is a which you know it's, it's like pirating energy like in in the light of what we're talking about now it seems you know what i mean it's like pilot uh pirating pirating energy you know what i mean uh from another universe and so if in in relation to dark matter they may be pirating dark matter are so, pirating you're brilliant no. and that that's why we're together <laughs> not like that y'all but you know what i'm saying like my brother so bro pirating, no diddy right no diddy no diddy <laughs> at, all. at all uh so bro pirating energy or dark matter there is an interesting story and i want to say it was about 2 years ago after I, I came across a, another article, which I haven't been able to locate uh, the storyline. Of course, you know, with social media, YouTube, there was someone who had produced a video. And if I can find it, I'm going to have to definitely- Yeah, we, we, we'll include this stuff as we discover it. We'll start to include this stuff, you know, in, either in the comments or in the, in the section below so you can go review this stuff. Right. Your own. Correct. <clears throat> Correct. So I don't want you all to think I'm making this up, but I quite honestly don't really under, uh, really care <laughs> <laughs> because I know what I saw and I, I know who I shared it out to. And those individuals have, you know, reaffirmed uh, and remembered those conversations and uh, the, the data being transferred to them. I wish they could help me with the relocation of it. However, I wanted to put this together for you all a long time ago. So after peering through two wormholes, so I, I want to find that so I can provide the receipts. Uh, you can do your own research, of course. And if you come across them, you could please comment, share, you know. Uh, but I want you to look into this for yourselves anyway. Don't take my word on anything that I say. Now, after peering through two wormholes that accidentally were opened in one of the uh, CERN, uh, I don't even know, activations when they turned on the Hadron Collider a couple years ago. They peered through these two wormholes and they were able from two vantage points to see these galaxies. Here's the interesting point to reason. 2017 is where some of the articles you will find online state that they made this discovery of 19 galaxies. That were possible. Wasn't that the eclipse? Correct. I'm get, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for tying that together too. Now those two wormholes, allegedly, because I don't have the receipts to show you today. I'm just going to use that safe word. Peer through two two holes at once, able to see these galaxies that they assume after their observation and reasoned had no dark matter consciousness. Somehow, allegedly, some of the dark matter was stored. I don't know if it's like I could use the word residue because I don't want you to think of like some some weird uh, sci-fi space goo move, movie-like substance of some sort. No, 
But whether it was gas form or the particles were able to be measured by some other means, maybe radio frequency or otherwise, they were able to procure some of this God particle, a.k.a. dark matter. And then there was an interesting YouTube video or two or three that were out. And I'm just saying that because I didn't go through all of them. I didn't go on like a, a whole rabbit hole on this thing. I just was looking at some things that caught my interest and caught my um, suspicion level of intellect to say, wait a minute. These other stories that were started immediately after that discovery, testing the market to see who would be interested in purchasing dark matter if they allegedly had, you know, hypothetically been uh, uh, able to procure some of this. And then they, they tossed around the idea because this is not a measurable resource by physical material standards. What would be the cost or the price or value set on this? And it was somewhere around $1 trillion per three grams of dark matter. So believe it or not, there are some individuals who would be able to afford such an undertaking. Uh, of the procurement of this dark matter consciousness. However, what would they be using it for? Well, this is just my theory. I'm gonna finally share it with the world or whoever comes across this. If you were able to take that dark matter, theoretically, speculatively, and you were able to somehow make an agreement because everyone has these demon theories about CERN, and I'm not here to mock you for that. Your belief or understanding of a thing is your belief or understanding of a thing, and it may or may not be a plausible reality for some. But regardless of the location of the Hadron Collider that we call CERN, regardless of the research that is or isn't going on, the possibility of, of uh, speculation that one could take that, make an agreement with an entity or energies or beings that are on the other side of these portals or wormholes to enter into that dimensional reality and reach those dark matter devoid galaxies with dark matter, you could possibly be considered a god in one or more of those galaxies that were devoid being that their theory was at one time they say that dark matter was the building block of all galaxies right so now all of a sudden you say it's not because you find galaxies that <coughs> devoid so then the definition of galaxy of course would theoretically logically have to change because what you thought was evidence of a galaxy is not present in what you see as a galaxy. Another potential usage for said black, uh, dark matter, if they're using particle physics in the Hydron Collider, then the particle that they use, if it is foreign to the universe and these two particles collide, then it would provide a new potential Type resulting energy type of matter. <clears throat> and then if you, oh, I, don't, I don't want to get into that, but, but if you have people's observation on some other thing, while that's actually occurring, then it could also cover for any, um, any resulting portal transferences that may occur during that time. If people are looking um, to the sky, as opposed to the, other potential portals that could be opening during that time. As you say, right on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Interesting, interesting, powerful stuff of possibility uh, mm -hmm. being, being uh, looked at here. Um, yeah, man, 
this is this is some interesting stuff but yeah so the invisible glue of the universe or what was thought to be the invisible glue of the universe at one time is even more invisible <laughs> in other words they they haven't really developed the level of technology to detect all forms of dark matter we could be looking at that and um, not, not making that as a statement but but it could possibly be a statement at some point in the future is it possible we just can't detect all the various types of dark matter that could exist in other places because we have not yet evolved to that point of awareness a buddhist I believe it was the Buddhist monks. It was either the Buddhist or the Hindu monks, one of the two. They were testing their meditative states. When they, when he went into a meditative state, his medulla oblongata, which is responsible for happiness, was activated to a degree that no other people on the planet were achieving this level of of, of happiness. And this was activated by by breathing. In light of what we're talking about, if we possess melanin, and melanin is the transition. Or, excuse, did I say melanin? I meant if dark matter is the substance of the universe that is able to transfer this energy, then if a person in a meditative state has any level of dark matter, uh, I mean dark dark matter in their system, then they have the capability of the same transference with vibration. You know, vibration can come from the mouth within themselves. So if his medulla oblongata is different than anybody else's on the planet through this meditative state, then he may have transferred a consciousness from a different life wave than our own into his own self by the same means that CERN is trying to bring this other dimensional. I mean, CERN is trying to study this other dimensional uh, perspective. <clears throat> then if we sat and combined this information albeit not fully complete because i mean i'm this is something cern has been in existence since what uh let me see i don't want to misquote the year i will tell you cern has been in existence for since 1954. all right for those that don't know just out of cure curiosity later we're gonna have to figure out when the melanin conferences started but uh, go ahead i want to say that they started possibly around the 70s but don't quote me on that uh mm -hmm. but both for quite some time now um mm -hmm. one of course longer than the other and of course they are definitely i would say interconnected um So dark matter does not, this is interesting, interact with electromagnetic forces. So it does not emit, absorb, or reflect light. This makes it challenging to detect directly using traditional observational methods. So then, of course, I've already read off to you all the way that they detect it and how they measure it, et cetera. Uh, yeah, but if we were to sit and, and connect the dots, I mean, who has time for that, right? Um, but yeah, if you were to do it, I mean, just imagine what we, what we might know, what we might know for ourselves uh in in the whole grand then oh my goodness one more addition i can't help myself at the point of death there is a measurable weight in the form of gas that leaves the body they say some say in the form of gas some say it doesn't have anything to do with gas it's a substance that we cannot measure that leaves the body so i just would like to to add that to the cipher it's measurable at mm. the time of death. Indeed. Indeed. And, and of, of course, with the further advancement of, of understanding 
would come the uh, devices or methods of detection or measure measure for those things and, and much more. Sorry about that, y'all. Human error, anyhow. <laughs> Yeah, man. Thanks for joining us. Like, share, subscribe, join our locals page. Uh, you know, wa watch, you know, our affiliate uh, channels, you know, Swable Room, YouTube, Swable Room, hey, 3 PMD podcast, Deeper Dives, Dialogue Unlimited, uh, The Left Leg of Gold Tron, Dirty Dives, The Handsome Beat Down. We got a full fledged channel, y'all. And you know, don't forget to subscribe to the J Drizzy, J Drizzy 3692. This is where you can find me and T Black Sun Shaman. You know, me and Handsome Mandela, aka the left leg of Goldtron. Uh, also the Swable Room affiliate videos. Hey, listen, we we got a good thing going on. Uh, we want to thank you for your viewership. Thank you for the new subscribers. We had 10 new subscribers in, in less than 28 days. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you all so much for your support when and, and, and where you can. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out the shorts. Just wanted to plug that right quick. It is a new website, uh, blacksunshaman.com. Yes, indeed. Uh, my man T, you know, he's got his health supplements and uh, holistic products uh, that are soon available for you. Yeah, they're up there right now, and uh, they'll be, um, it'll be within, uh, probably within 48 hours, they'll be available for purchase on there. Right now, you can go view everything. You can see the cost and everything, and then I'm waiting on the last leg of it, and I'm going to do the full launch probably next week sometime. <clears throat> Knowledge site coming through from, from, from one, if not both of us, whether together or individually, we still connect. So, you know, hey, look for the, those things, too. We'll get the names out to you once that's all, you know, fully uh, in place. But, hell, thank you for joining the Beyond the Veil podcast. You know, this is what, episode six or, or seven? X, yes, Great six, episode. Six. Fire. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you all. Love you. Peace. Oh, you know what? Can I say one more thing? It just hit my heart oh, right yeah, before. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, if this is any type of portal, any type of changing in vibration, make sure you get what you want out of this situation. Make sure you review oh. things, reconstruct things in a way and, and use your imaginative force in a way where you see the world the way it you it should be in a better situation better situation for yourself yes. more in alignment with the view that you have for yourself so you can hop through that portal if it's a portal or whatever it may be <clears throat> hey i'm with you on that brother i man how could i forget that was like one of the key uh, uh matters of importance we wanted to really share with you all but yeah hey whatever your perception is that's going to be the new thing and this is definitely a new thing. This is about newness. Um, this is this is a triple eights portal. Uh, don't miss don't miss this opportunity. This is a triple eights. I mean, this is the return in, in some people's verbiage of the black sun. Uh, this occurs, you know, in every so many life cycles. So we are in a fortunate time. Uh, those who cross over to the other side, it was it's meant to be. Um, stay stay your focus and stay your your course on your journey. Um, yeah, this this is exciting times. We we got have a lot of events occurring all at once. Uh, it can be be a bit overwhelming. Those of you who've been uh, struggling with the confrontation of the dark side of the mind, you know. Don't be discouraged. Accept what you see, but don't stay that way. Accept That's it. See, but do not stay that way. Um, look in the mirror. Capture the image for a moment and then let it go. It's all a part of, part of refining. It's all a process of refining to a new structure. 
Most definitely. Most definitely. And I want to share this with those of you uh, who may be within a faith. We won't specify, but as a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap, we shall purify the sons of Levi that they may offer unto him a sacrifice in righteousness. Don't become the sacrifice. Make sure that you refine and rebuke with all sound doctrine within your own personal scope of belief, understanding, and faith. This has been Beyond the Veil, y'all. Thanks for joining us. And uh, much love.